Hello there, I'm Chris Meek, and I'm delighted to be on this episode of Gareth Jones on Speed. Chris, Chris, hi, sorry yeah. that they are. Um, listen, we don't need you after all. Thanks. Bye. Not again. Oh, bollocks. Hello and welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed Season 8, which is the 2013 year model, even though it's only of 2012, because that's how they do it at the Detroit Motor Show. Yeah, I'm confused already. but No, no, no change there. We've got off to a thundering start then. You're hearing the voice of Zog. Hello. And not the voice of Richard at all, but the, probably the hum, the 50 hertz. Is it 50 hertz that thing hums at? Jonathan, do iPads vibrate at 50 hertz? Okay, first failure of the show. I have no idea. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't because there's no mains power going into it. How can it possibly be vibrating at 50 hertz? I'm going to say no. I'm going to stick my neck out and say well, no. It's going to oscillate at some sort of frequency, and I bet that's picking up. How are you, Richard? Welcome back from America. Hello. You're right. <laughs> that's that's jet yeah, lagged. Yeah, I'm a bit jet lagged, and that fascinating discussion about hertz rent a car or whatever you were doing has really helped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also in the room, Jonathan Sanderson hovering at the perimeter. Jonathan, thank you for the edit of that fine last bit of video. Of the yeah, oh, that was yeah. 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 excellent trailer. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've bestowed on us a certain sort of classy sheen that we signally lack in real life. We did up to now. Now we have that sheen. Yeah, but not in real life. We've got to, we have I, a I, slick I, public I, image. I don't feel that I'm sort of beautifully focused and slightly lit with a blue gel. <laughs> but now, but, but now, in everybody's minds, that's how you're coming that's across. But, you, look. Look. Know, but you have lovely depth of field when I, I look do, at you. I now. do. That's mm. the thing. By the way, I was serious about that 2013 model year thing, even though this is the 2012 series, because that's how they do it at Detroit. Have you noticed that they've more or less? launched the new Mondeo, because they haven't, really. Yes. But they're calling it a 2013 model year car, available from March 2012. Well, this is, yeah, but this that's is America. also... Which no, 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 like a 2012 no, model that's year not car, the case. What the thing is, it's a 2013 model year car in America, because they do it a year in advance. It's terribly confusing. Like, British yeah. magazines are always yeah. dated the a month. A month in advance, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Fusion, as it's called over there, will be out this year. Mm -hmm. But this is where it's all very strange... The Mondeo won't be out until March next year, like actual 2013, in Europe, because Ford wants to make sure all of their cars as much as possible are sold the same all over the globe. I mean, that was fine yeah, with the Ford Fiesta. One thing, yeah, yeah, one yeah. Ford and whatever they're one calling Ford, it. Sure, yeah, so yeah. the Fiesta, they didn't really have that in America in the first place. So when we got a new Fiesta, they got it over there a bit later and all was happy. The Focus... Ford never did the Mark II Focus in America. They just got a dodgy yeah. facelift of the first one. Yeah. So it was getting a bit tired when we got the brand new Mark III Focus developed in Europe, for the most part. Americans got it too. Happy times. But when it came to the Mondeo, which was also the same size as the Ford Fusion over there, they were all out of sync. The model cycles were all skew -if. But they wanted to bring them together because part of the else, the Fusion over there was based on the Mazda 6, and Ford and Mazda aren't friends anymore. Mm. So presumably there was some money involved and they wanted to get shot pronto. So the Americans have developed this new Fusion new slash Fusion, Mondeo. Yeah, on which the Mondeo is based. On which the Mondeo will be based. It's a whole brand new car. Yeah, yeah. And the Americans have shouldered the burden of development, but it's ready and they want to get it out there. But Ford of Europe, not heritage. ready. Don't want it yet. Mondeo, we have now, still got some life left in it. And they've still got Mondeos to sell. Yeah. yeah. Mondeo oh, in is Europe is really worth something. And by Europe, I mean the UK as well. That is really worth something over here. In what sense? People love Mondeo. You know, well, they don't. A, they, That's the problem. Well, not as much they, as they used the to. The sales have like halved over the last five years, I think. But, but the point which, which are presumably it's mostly fleet sales. But, but, yeah, but yeah, the, rental and fleet. But the, yeah. the point I'm trying to make is that the heritage of the Mondeo didn't work so well in the US. The Mercury Mystique, the Ford Contour, I yeah, think it yeah. was when it first came out, which is their first. World car, CDW27 or something. Yeah, like that. That's right. that's the that was an abject, blooming failure. Mm. And if you look back to the introduction of the World Escort, when the Escort became a front drive car in 1981 or something, mm. it was like that. That was a Ford World car, which was not a disaster in America because, exactly as you just said, America bears no relation to the middle sized Ford of Europe. And I'm concerned that Ford making this big issue about being one Ford and this being, you know, this the new Fusion will be the Mondeo, mm. that's going to really upset Americans who quite like their old Fusion 
which was a big old chunky car that looked a bit like a Passat, but it was more American. I think this looks too European. That's my point. I'm worried. Right. Well, speaking well, of looks, well, well, I, the one thing that struck, I think, all of us mostly about the look is that it looks more like an Aston Martin from the front than well, any other previous that, Ford. There's yes. something about the grille that is very it's Aston odd, Martin. isn't it? And the Aston Martin it. grille is not a shape you design accidentally. There are rectangles and circles and triangles in the world and they're mm. all sort of broadly of the same ilk. But that is a very specific and, and slightly good. contrived shape. Car designers know the language, they know the vocabulary yeah. they're working with and you'd figure that if they put that front on the car, they know what they're it's doing. It's not exactly the same, because the Aston, I think, no. has the chamfered corners, if you like, at the top. We knew, but it's this, it, you know, you know, we we knew this was coming. You look at the Fiesta, you look at what they've done to the Focus in the States, and you could see that they were going for the full-on Aston in the next car. You know, this has been hinted at. But we've also said, now that Ford have divested themselves, mostly, mm. of Aston and Volvo and Range Rover. They can produce all those cars themselves. I mean, oh, we can have that back, you know? Yeah, there's a bit of... What, what, what's of, it well, called? The Flex? We've said this, haven't we? The Flex is, was a Range Rover. This is Ford plagiarising <laughs> That Flex has bombed there in the States. And I just saw, when I was over there over Christmas, I saw the facelifted one. And they've gone for an interesting tack of taking the Ford badge off the front and just writing Flex across the leading edge of the bonnet. And I can't think that's going to help at all. It's very chromey as well at the front. Mm. It's a very so. long wheelbase. Is that why they call it flex? I really like it. Do you think it actually <laughs> flexes? It just bends in the middle like an Avon team or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> nice second back. time in a row that we've mentioned the, there you go. the Renault Bendy. But I don't know <laughs> that Americans will object to the Fusion being the Mondeo. First of all, because the Fusion has been developed in America, unlike the Focus and the Fiesta. And I saw quite a lot of Fiestas on the road to California mm -hmm. when I was over there recently. Hey, and that is a Euro car. I mean, that was developed in Britain. Shocking mm. Fiesta fact, it's four years old. Is we it? still think of it as a new car. It's yeah. four years so old. It's wearing well, then. It's getting a facelift at the end of this year. Yeah, but it yeah. doesn't look like it needs it. And you could see yeah. that they could probably make it look quite fresh just by yeah. sort of a couple of little tweaks in the bumpers and some new alloys, and it would be spot on. Looks it's good nice in the hands of Peter Solberg. Well, yeah. It does, oh, and in the hands of Kenny Block. Yeah. And oh, yeah. not so good, though, when he actually went rallying in it and completely stuffed it. <laughs> Stick to the Jim Carner, Ken. Honestly, my idea of Jim Carner, he's got the wrong jacket and hat on, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I didn't see Princess Anne anywhere. Acceleration again, whoops, up the curve and onto two wheels, incredible, but then back down safely on the four wheels and down the steps, that's got to be a bumpy ride, but a jump and then straight through the narrow doorway, handbraking perfectly from 90 degrees to a halt, and Princess Anne then removes her crash helmet and takes her seat ready for the arrival of the bride, Kate Middleton. Actually, it's not called the Detroit Motor Show. It's called the North American International Auto Show, N-A-I-A-S. We've never called it that before. We've always called it Detroit. No, it's always been called that. It's just that I think we don't bother because it's in Detroit. And in the same way that, you know, I think the Geneva Show is actually called something Auto Salon. Auto Salon, yeah. Yes, but what you're doing is... You're following the Geneva Convention. There they go. Badoom. Yeah, no, it has always been called that. It's always abbreviated, N-A, N-A, whatever those We've never bought it. just the it? Detroit Motor Show. Yeah, the American yeah. press do, and now on Twitter you'll see it hashtagged as that. For the Look, I know you've just come back from America, Richard, and you think America's in probably good shape in terms of the cars that are going to... Uh, yeah, I don't think America industry. generally is in good shape. It's amazing how they I'm, carry on with that sort of vanguard of capitalism bravado mm. about, you know buying stuff is good mm. but you're seeing a lot of empty shops scattered around as you are here but also you know when you used to go to america and everything seemed quite cheap you know you yep. could eat like a king for about five pounds mm -hmm. and you'd go and buy a load of cds back when people did that yeah and, and you'd jeans. buy jeans and trainers <laughs> and, stuff. Trainers, yeah. and the price difference seemed like it was preposterous you'd take an empty mm. suitcase perhaps yeah. and it's just not the case anymore so you didn't bring a mustang well, back with you i didn't no i didn't i didn't bring anything back really didn't bring a, a belly because the portions are enormous didn't bring a dodge dart back 
No. Have you seen this song? It's an oh, Alfa Romeo Julietta. It's Giulietta. just been announced at N-A-I-S-I-A-S-A-S-A-S. Oh, I missed that. Continuing that this ownership of Chrysler, well, co-ownership, is it, by the Fiat Group. Yeah. They're basing all the new Chryslers on Alphas, many of them, and the new Dodge Dart, which is, I think, about the size of the old Neon. Remember the Plymouth Neon or yeah. the Dodge yeah. Neon? It's actually based on the Julietta. It's an Alfa mm. Romeo. I saw an Ypsilon, the new Lan- Chrysler. <laughs> Ypsilon in North Wales. It just seems an absurd idea that selling Lanches as Chryslers, Alphas as Chryslers. Is America going to buy that? I don't think it is. I don't know. Dodge Dart is a name from way back, which yeah. I think people have a lot of affection for, yeah. as far as I can work out in America. But hey, I like the Morris right. Mine Emma. I wouldn't buy one. Well, exactly. Yes. Mm. There's one thing going. Oh, I recognise that name. Mm. And another one going. Hey, I'm writing a check. Just mm. try and stop me. But it does look quite nice. It's all right. It's not a bad looking little car. Basically, the front of a Mitsubishi Lancer mm. and the back of, from some angles. The old Seat Toledo. Mm. What they've done on the latest Dodge Charger, the four-door saloon over there, is they've given it this incredible full-width rear lights, and they're all LEDs, and at night, it's not subtle, but it is bloody distinctive and rather mm. dramatic, this huge well, sort of I, shape, red on. shape, and, and the, the bits Char- of it light up and flash Richard, accordingly. Richard, 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 whether you like the Charger or not, you certainly notice it. You know, Richard, yeah, absolutely. So, and, yeah. Unsubtle American car? It's hard to really? believe, I know. And the dart, by contrast, seems a little sort of underplayed, but it has oh, got this full well, width yeah. backlight. And yeah, it looks all right. I'll show you a picture afterwards. Yeah, no, I'll have a second. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Do you know what I do? Uh, go on. Nothing to do with the dart. Do you remember the PT Cruiser did very well? In the yeah, well, for a yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, they said, I think they ought to revisit that using the platform of the multiplier which is now nice and free and cheap and easy. I think they've flogged that to the Chinese, actually. No! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a space really... frame. They can do so yeah, much with that. Yeah, yeah. But can you imagine mm-hmm. using that platform on a new 21st century PT Cruiser where you could have a bench seat? America would love that, a front bench, because it's three in a row. They're about the same size. Get me Sergio Marchioli's phone <laughs> number. Where? Do, <laughs> do the current safety regulations, though, allow that? Is a bench seat out I from a regulation point of view? I think as long as you've got a seatbelt and probably a headrest, so it would really? spoil some of the retroness. But I like your thinking, Gareth. Yeah, Sorry, you, I, Jonathan, you, it, well, it's got something to contribute. Are you seriously from? talking about a retro PT Cruiser? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair point, yeah. yeah but a more retro, yeah. yeah. It sort well, of cancel itself out to a big cloud of nothing. Isn't that the new well, Mini, though? Gonna, I think they exhausted their goodwill with the PT Cruiser, because it was a huge hit when it arrived, and then yeah. it just sort of fizzled out. Unusually fashionable car, very Japanese in sort of its culture, in that it had this sort of short, bright burn period, like a Japanese fashion car. Mm. Unusual for America, who tends to stay with mm. brands and names and developments of the same thing over a much longer period. Curious, it broke that trend, I think. I'd love to see that. But I'm going to say I wouldn't, because I th- actually thought the PT Cruiser was bloody awful. It well, was not very space efficient. I agree. I've just sort of got over the initial sort of, oh, that's interesting yeah. reaction. Yeah, really, it wasn't a very nice Well, car. I liked but it on the other I hand, drove it. I think that was the problem. I, I right, drove yeah. on once, and I just thought, oh, God, this is sort of relentlessly mediocre. But then... On the multiple platform, it would be much yeah, better, which is right. not a bad yeah, drive. Yeah. No, but, it wasn't. but on the other hand, you know, you know t- t- taking kind of a sort of, you know, a nostalgic or looking backwards approach to design can sometimes produce a very good result. I'm thinking particularly of the Reborn Mini as opposed to the Reborn Beetle, for example. Yeah. 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 Very successful. Yeah. Great little car. The Charger. New Charger. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. The 300C is interesting, the Chrysler, because that doesn't sort of directly reference an old car, but it does have but it's a very retro, retro feel yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. And that sort of seems to work better because it's not trying too hard. And oddly, actually, the car that the designer of the original one said influenced him the most was the Rover P5. It wasn't an American car at all. I but actually, thought but it, it was Chuckaboo but in terms of from Wacky Races, which was the principal... Chuckaboo. Which yeah. one was Chuckaboo? Wasn't it the Boulder Brothers? Was the, that the no, Chuckaboo? no, it was the car oh, that, was that the, the Antil mob drove, of course. And whenever I see a 300C, I think... The Antil. Yeah, I know it's a different yeah. period, but there's something about the 300C that says, OK, you guys make winner legs. For me. <laughs> Every time it is I very gangster, it. that is it true. Is, but you can see that this is the 300C and P5 in terms of the... Uh, shallow windows and yeah, all that. Yeah, exactly, that's yeah. it, yeah. Shallow windows and, like, a big body. Yeah, a big Grill body front, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Chicago yeah. plate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're all registered in Chicago. My kind of town. <laughs> so where were we? Yeah, I don't know. I was going to make some point about how when America's got its back against the wall, whether through threat of terrorism or economic downturn, seeks comfort in its glorious past. 
But it seems like Detroit isn't doing that this time. What they're doing instead is the more sort of German and sometimes French model of looking forwards and embracing technology and let's look forward to getting our way out of this trouble rather than looking back. And You're seeing more hybrid? You're seeing yeah, the hybrids, idea of diesels being cars. brought into America? In, uh, Throwing money yeah. at the interiors of cars is an interesting one because I think yeah. you know it's all well and good to scoff at American cars in the past for being a bit dynamically wobbly and, mm. and sort of plasticky inside, but the truth is that they were incredibly cheap incredibly mm. cheap and they had to be built down to a price mm. and just churn them out by the thousands from these big factories in detroit many of which have now closed down mm. and that's why and now detroit's trying a different tack let's invest the money let's try and make the cars more appealing in the first place and sort of build in some innate desirability rather than just a low price which is something that you know obviously a lot of other manufacturers the german ones particularly have peddled for a long time mm. Yeah, the serious point. Though. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah, well. Very quickly, I was going to just mention another American car that's been announced at NASIS. I S A N A S in Detroit. Yeah, the Cadillac ATS, which is their new three series rival. Well, hang on, they're describing it as a three series, but in profile it looks like a mercedes c-class well a grill a yeah. alone. but they've I'd unashamedly see. this actually goes back to the point i was just making they've is unashamedly said look this is going to be a german car they've developed it to the nurburgring oh. it's within a whisker in all dimensions of the three series it's no, uncanny the, the, uh, the way they've just gone okay this is what we need to aim for and we will do it with a steady eye on the target done a proper job of it yeah well i mean every chance it could be because while i was in the states i drove the cadillac ctsv estate which is almost your perfect car in American. You know, I love muscle. Cadillacs. I love a sporting estate. But when you told me this has got a 6.3 litre super two, 6.2 super 6.2 563 super horsepower. Are you responsible for the San Andreas fault? No, there was an earthquake and I quickly accelerated and yeah. it cancelled the earthquake that out. That would do it, yeah. No yeah. need to thank me, yeah. people of Southern California. But it's an incredible car. I mean, genuinely, it's not one of those things where you can sort of slightly patronisingly say, oh, it's good for an American car. It's mm. just good. It's a good car. Again, developed at the Nürburgring. It's just one of those cars that feels properly sorted in every mm. way. Nice, sort of stiff but not uncomfortable chassis. Direct steering. Lovely Alcantara steering wheel rim. Mm. It has a stick shift, which you know, is obviously unusual and actually a bit of a pain in a lot of Los Angeles. But when you get it on an open road... It uses the same gearbox as a Vauxhall VXR8 and the Camaro and the of Mustang. Course. It's a Tremec box. It's a mm. bit of an old slugger of a box. It's not exactly slick, but it's the oh, best change I've ever experienced on that gearbox. I think they've engineered it. Is this Cadillac giving up on being Cadillac? Everything we've ever heard about Cadillac, we're trying to make the car more European, you know, yeah. to be BMW and yeah. Mercedes standards, and, oh, we're going to build one that's really a Saab for Europe, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's a shame, because Cadillac, if you think about it, was the American Rolls-Royce, and how the mighty fall. Mm. It's come a long way from that lofty position to now being, well, we hope we're as good as BMW, you know. I, I don't know why you're, I'm doing a Canadian accent, I but I am. Hey, what's it all about, Gary? <laughs> I, I think the problem, you're absolutely right, because the thing is well first of all they've probably given up being cadillac in the old sense of sort of comfort and extreme luxury because they made too many mistakes trying to do that yeah. that no one's going to take them seriously so they've had to try a different tack yeah. but no car company i believe truly succeeds when they're just trying to be someone else they have to yeah. have integrity bmw does not look around and go who should we try and mimic? They just be BMW. Hmm. Land Rover doesn't think, well, should we be a bit more like Jeep or should we be more like a Toyota Land Cruiser? They just go, we're Land Rover. This mm -hmm. is the way we do things. For better or worse, they have an integrity. And when a car has an integrity, and a range of cars has an integrity, it's much easier to sell it because you're telling people a sort of consistent proposition. This is what we're about. BMWs, we're rear-wheel drive, mm. we're perfect balance, we're driver's cars, and they can do that very well. Land Rovers, we're good off-road, but we're also practical and versatile. And, you know, Range Rovers, we're luxurious versions of that, and we're mm. expensive, but we're also very prestigious. It's easy for people to get their heads around these things. And they sort of market themselves. What's Cadillac stand for now? Is it luxury or is it European sportiness or is it that they're a bit like BMWs but they're made in Detroit and they're a bit cheaper? Yeah, yeah. there's no that's way to sell it. It's a very long way to go. Unless you're an American. Well, well, unless you're an American. Yeah, because well, Americans they, will uh, still go with a heritage. And from yeah. a European perspective, Cadillac has always had a very hard time selling cars in Europe in any quantity. It's been easy for them to sell yeah. you know, a few cars to somebody that wants a Cadillac because yeah. it's a big American car, it's different. And Stuart Hall. Yeah, but if you want to sell them in numbers, they're having to kind of re-engineer the brand for yeah, Europe. That's so the thing. I think they're thinking globally now, and so they've realised that people who do well making 
cars like that around the world are generally BMW and Mercedes. So mm. let's be like them. But they should probably soft pedal the actual explicit mimicking because it just makes them seem weak like they haven't got ideas of their own however one final thought i was driving the ctsv wagon in black with black wheels around la it's a fabulous looking car and it's a fabulous driving car we met someone we know and and he said oh what have you got there and i went that's a cadillac and he went that's a cadillac (laughs) and i thought he meant it entirely Mm. like quad rat demonstrants yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he sort of meant oh you don't look like a florida pensioner exactly yeah At underground car park, Em, I had you down for more salubrious circumstances. Less of a lip, Bond. This is your final warning. I'm giving you one last chance to capture Malbec before I give this assignment to another agent. Relax, Em. I've got this perfectly under control. So you say, 007. Now, get out of here. Good night, Em. Bond! Bond! Bond, that's the new Mondeo. Your Aston's over there. Oh, bugger. Gareth Jones on speed. Going to be controversial now. Have you seen the, what do they call it, the Lexus LFLC hybrid sports Coupe that was launched at the NIAAA Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a quick look at that. I saw the thumbnail pics, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's an attractive car. Yeah. You know, it's a very well spec car. Yeah. It'll do really it's, well. I just... I, I have a problem immediately with the name, because just as we were talking about old ladies... Yeah. And Lexus have done a concept called Elsie. <laughs> They have. Uh, I'm trying to Google it. I've already forgotten. What was it called? LC dash... No, LF dash LC. LF dash LC. You see, there's a bit... Yeah, it doesn't trip off the tongue, does it? Although you could could call it the LFLC. My problem, I have... LOLC. It would just be like, LOLC. Oh, there you go. We're doing it. That was your sort of... The point I'm trying to make here is not even about the Lexus at all. It's a very, very lovely, very good car, very solid car. But if... That same car with the same spec and everything was a Jaguar. Mm-hmm. The entire British motor press, and probably us as well, would say, It's the star of the show! That's we are true. terrible like that, aren't we? Are you well, saying that our expectations of Lexus are so high that they roll out something cracking and we just mm-hmm. go, Oh, yeah, that's okay? No, I'm saying the, that the British how- press are probably the most biased. Oh, no, 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 they're not, honestly. Trust Italians? Me. I think the Italians, I particularly remembering, and I can't really read French, but my attention was drawn to reading the verdict in a French magazine when the Peugeot 607 came out. Oh, I was hoping you were going to say the name of the car till the end and tell uh, us the name. I decided it was the best car ever made in the entire history of the well, universe. Well, it certainly and beat off all years. comers from oh, Mercedes, BMW, Jaguar, and <laughs> Jesus Christ our Lord. It was the best thing ever. Except, of course, it wasn't, because I remind you, it was the Peugeot 607, and it was the, how do you say, dirt of a chien. Uh, so, I don't think the British car media, though they may support the home team a little too much sometimes, and some magazines, Magazines in particular, Autocar, oh, really? to yeah. a little bit carried away. I don't think there's anything wrong with supporting the home team if everyone else is at it. And let's be honest, why not be proud of our remaining Indian owned but <laughs> remaining car manufacturer, which why has created 4,000 yeah, jobs in sure. the last year or so and is yeah. still recruiting engineers and uh, manufacturing people and is doing actually pretty well at the moment? Hey, yeah, hooray yeah, for that. I'm all for being proud of the heritage, but one should report about it and talk yes. about it in a credible way. In order yeah. to be credible, you have to not bull too much and not be. Too biased. Readers can read reviews and commentary and take a certain amount of sympathy or yeah. a certain amount of implied bias, but only a certain amount. You know, you push too far and... Uh, it's funny you... how, actually, but British magazine readers generally, and particularly Evo, where I work sometimes, and, and I think Car Magazine and also Car suffer from it as well, readers get very frothy at the mouth about this perceived constant bias towards German cars. <laughs> Why are you constantly being paid off by Porsche and BMW? And you have to say, well, well we're kind of not. They make some they pretty just good make cars. They really That's... good cars. I mean, yeah. it's actually quite depressing when you get into a new variant of the Porsche Cayman or a new variant of the 3 Series and you go, 
well, this is bloody good. <laughs> oh, how can I not say it's bloody good? Yeah. It's unfortunate, but they've cracked it. They make some mistakes, and when they do, I like to think that my colleagues at the magazine say so. The know. complainant is under the mistaken impression that every country's motor industry produces the same proportion of brilliant cars, yeah. mediocre cars and duff cars. Yeah. And that's just not the case. No, it's absolutely not. Unfortunately, Germany seems to have become quite good at making cars. You could argue that part of the reason for that is that so many of their engineering resources in the last 50 years or so have gone into building cars rather than building nuclear weapons. Yeah, exactly. Possibly. Yes. Um, Do you want to hear some good news for the British motor industry? Um, well, yeah. yeah. Driven by the death of Saab. All right. Now that Saab have gone away, well... At this point in time, there's every likelihood that mm, you know, yeah. this Saab is dead. Mm. It is an ex-turbocharged cabriolet. It has shuffled off the road to Troll Hattan, etc., etc. Good news is that Morgan will be able to use the word aero without any sort of legal dispute. Was there a legal dispute? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Must and have been... Uh, well, I hope Morgan sent them a stiff number. telex about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's still on the way I there. hope that it started with the words... That's why the legal budget's <laughs> taken so long. Yeah. Everything's coming back... Uh, uh, bad pigeon. news, sir. The pigeon has got yeah. lost again. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're I'm going to have to right redraft now. the letter, starting <laughs> with the words, now, look here... <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the pigeon got to Sweden and it became so cold that it froze and his wings snapped off. And then, uh, yeah, motorcycle outrider took over for the rest of the trip and uh, Saab had gone into business by the time they got there. So or there they, we go. That's the right, it's, it's bad news, for, sir. I'm afraid those bally sweets have sent one of their fighter aircraft to attack our factory. Right, that's it. Fire up the hurricane. Boom, clear. Boom, dum, 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 dum. I believe Bristol sent out a young, a ten-year-old chimney sweet boy with the message when they went under. Well, a snub-nosed Victorian urchin. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> yes, no, they sent Please, a town sir. crier out. That's <laughs> right. Oh, yes, <laughs> you <laughs> can't <release. laughs> That is how all Bristol press releases start. Sure. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> you're, you're giving me some marketing ideas, Dan. You're, uh, you're, you're actually taking Anyway, back yes. to the NCIS Miami or whatever yeah, it's called. It, yeah, there was a new VW Beetle. VW, the second biggest car manufacturer in the world now. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of jockeying for that, but it's, at the moment I think the top three goes uh, VW GM, group, VW be, Group, yeah, yeah. and then Toyota, because Toyota have had a bit of a dip with that. There's so only two things I want to say about the Beetle. First thing is that it's called is the, the E-Bugster. Yeah. How do we feel about that? It's almost rude, isn't it? E-Bugster. Mm. Oh, it's kind of funky. I'm okay with it. I'm not wild about it, but if they want to call it the E-Bugster... That's okay. I'm it also sounds like a Yorkshireman who's LSE, discovered whatever. something annoying, but he's in front of his children, so he doesn't want to swear. Hey, bookster! Yeah. It's just like my parents used to say sugar instead of another word, because, you know... Mm. It's, it's got a slight like whiff of do. sodomy about it, that name. I don't know you why, know but it I worries did, me. I didn't even notice uh, that. Uh, hey, bookster. But but it, it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, bookster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go. It, but it's I a good-looking little concept, isn't it? Don't you think? It's kind of... It's really... It's electric. Yeah, and it's electric, and it had something of the Porsche 356 yeah. about it in the yeah. way that it looked nice and low. Mm, um, that's true. It's a bit of a speedster, uh, but with a roof. I don't know what you call it, like a hot roddy sort of effect. Yeah, the, yeah. the electric. Whether they'll have that on the production version, who knows? Well, here's yeah. the thing they're not going to do it as a Beetle. This electric technology exists and will be in production soon, but they're actually the saying op- it will debut you now in the Golf, I think. Really? The next Golf. But he's the Beetle sh- in the Golf. Well, yeah. So, I meant to so say I mean, that's talking, powertrain, but yeah, in the Golf. Yeah, yeah, but in the Golf. It's an interesting thing. Get the headlines with the cutesy looking concept, but yep. then put it into the practical car where people will actually buy it in big numbers. Hmm. But I was going to say, the next Golf, they're saying get a one litre three cylinder engine. And I meant to say when we we're talking about the new Mondeo that's not coming for another 14 months, hmm. that it's going to have at some point Ford's new one litre three cylinder turbocharged yeah. engine. Yeah. This is downsizing. What, what is, happening it, what, what, all over the shop. is that the Atkinson cycle engine in the Oh, uh, no, the, because that's no, 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 the, 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 that, That's the hybrid in the hybrid. I think the European we're hybrid might have your, a smaller engine. We're back in Yorkshire right. again, yeah. though, aren't we? You know, Atkinson Cycle, wasn't that the bike you used to deliver bread on? <laughs> You're on th- to Atkinson Cycle. Hey, hey. a bookster. Now, what um, we, exactly, the alternative is the Otto The Otto Cycle. cycle. Yeah, no, yeah, the Atkinson Cycle, it's a slightly different design of internal combustion engine to, if you like, your regular Otto Cycle internal combustion engine yeah. that inherently gives better thermal efficiency you know it's, okay so basically it's a more efficient kind of engine but an engine of the same power tends to be bigger if it's an atkinson cycle engine and the way it does it is essentially i think if i've got this right it has a longer power stroke than a compression stroke the compression stroke of the power oh. stroke are different lengths how do you do that well exactly yeah mm. in order to do that you either need a very clever 
crankshaft design. Mm -hmm. A rock pendulum <laughs> crankshaft. Or you do something clever with your intake and your outlet valves, which gives you more or less the same effect. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's okay. But something so, similar happens in the Miller cycle. Oh, yeah. Mazda. 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 I tried to step me. I was about to ask you that because Mazda did the Miller yeah, cycle. Yeah, they're doing thing. it again. Miller cycle is, is this part of the Atkins cycle. Sorry, yes. yes. so we got very excited there. For that's Atkins cycle with a supercharger, I believe. Oh, no, but they're doing Miller cycle of a naturally aspirated engine. Miller cycle. But, as you mentioned, Fudging these tricksy stroke things, but using the valve timing to do it, yep. is exactly what Mazda are doing because their new Sky Active engine uses the engine management to change the valve timing and phasing and all sorts of stuff at mm. certain points in the rev range to mimic Miller's cycle, I believe. Jonathan's uh, hovering. Yes. Have yeah. you been reading up point, on it? Point of order is not entirely wrong. The Atkinson oh, cycle bugger. is an engine that works entirely without carbohydrate. No, that's the Atkins that, engine. That, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> which we have just yeah. patented on Funny. this. Which we just... yeah. And it's emissions. Uh, uh, really, really, really uh, I think we'd better leave it there, don't <laughs> you? Before we go, there's a reveal. You want... Oh, We're yeah. actually going to do an unveiling live on the programme of a car from Detroit. I kid you not, this is a first for Gareth Jones. Play screen. along, by the way, if you haven't seen this, or even if you have, but you haven't really thought about it too much. The new Honda NSX, or in the US, and that's the RSPCTE, uh, Socket to Me, Socket to Me, Socket to Me, Detroit show. E I E I O. They are calling it the Acura NSX because Acura are posh Hondas in America. Mm -hmm. And this is a replacement for the much loved. Andre NSX. At the point of recording this show, I've not seen it, but you two... Yeah, yeah. I, I, Andre I, NSX, developed by Anton Senna, the new one yeah. not, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. there we go. So, exciting. Gareth, you've never seen this before. No, here we go, they're going to take but the covers I, what, off. My question to you is, yeah. look at it very quickly. Yeah. What does it remind you of? Okay. Bang. Oh, that's... Um, go that, that, that's an MP4, isn't it? That's the MP4 12C, um, no, isn't it's it? It's interesting you say that. Well, no, uh, what do you think of the back? I think you need the other three-quarter of you. Oh, sorry. Zogan and I plotted this earlier on, and we haven't actually got it right. You're, you're quite right go. about Have the McLaren from that angle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a Ferrari in that profile there. That's the new, not the California, what's it called? The four... I've, lo I've lost track of the numbers. 458. 458. You see, well, uh, to me, uh, that is pretty much, from many angles... A weird pastiche of the yet to be launched Lotus Esprit. Oh, of course it is. Um, <laughs> I'm maybe on alone on this, but that, that rear view is very similar, Ooh. and that front three quarter is very yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice looking car, mm. yeah. and now they just have to crack on and build it instead of doing what they did last time with the new NSX, which is developing Change at the point mind. it was ready and then yeah. not doing it. But I, I find it interesting the way that the roof line seems to be if you got the old NSX in your mind's eye that new roof line hey, is, is very reminiscent I've learned something from this it's What's like that? like an episode of South Park we get to the end and someone says hey guys I've learned something, I've learned something today. or yeah. Inspector yeah. Gadget they used to do that yeah. a lot didn't they but I seriously have seeing the Acura NSX I now realise that the McLaren MP4 12C DBS and bar <laughs> um, actually does have some kind of design ethic of its own because we've all looked at that car and gone it's quite like a Ferrari. Oh, it's a bit bland. But mm. now when we see something else and we can describe it in terms of being like a McLaren, mm. job done, that car's got some DNA. Good point. Yeah. Can I leave you with another Jerry Springer-style thought for the day? <laughs> we talked before about how the American car industry, and particularly Cadillac, are sort of looking overseas mm. for their influences. But there's something remarkable about that new NSX. Honda say they are going to make it, but more than that, they are going to develop and make it in the US. So while the domestic American car makers are increasingly looking overseas mm -hmm. for the development and even sometimes the build of their cars, there's one of Japan's car makers doing their flagship in, in America. America. Who well, would have thunk it? I've been saying for years that Honda are no longer a Japanese car company. They are a proper multinational mainly because for proper I global. think something like 20 years they've built more cars outside of Japan than they actually have in Japan you've been listening to Richard Porter goodbye Zog goodbye the distant voice of Jonathan Sanderson goodbye and I was Gareth see you for the next one in season 8 of Gareth Jones on Speed to send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site or follow us on Twitter, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Gareth Jones on Speed!